flow, um, for a flow of air over a horizontal flat plate, the local heat transfer coefficient H, Hx is given by the equation Hx equals 25 over x to the 0.4, where Hx is local coefficient, distance, and x is the distance from the leading edge of the plate in meters. Consider the flow of air at temperature of 21, C sub P of 1004.8, vis dynamic, vis no, it's kinematic viscosity at 1.5, uh, conductivity of 0 0.025 and plane at 0.7, at a velocity of three meters per second over a flat plate. The plate has a thermal conductivity of 33 watts per meter per Kelvin and surface temperature of 58, width of one meter and length of 1.2 meters. We are to calculate the heat flux at point three from the leading edge of the plate and the local heat transfer coefficient at the end of the plate. Cool, so what are we gonna do? Well, what is the situation? Again, flat plate, okay? And again, we have a fluid, in this case, it's air. So we, the fluid here is air in this case, at 21, and the, the surface of the plate is at 58. So we know that will be uh, energy going from the plate into the fluid, right? We know that. For, for starters. The other thing that we know is that, um, note that the H has been given to vary with X, so that as we go down the plate, as we go further down the plate, our X increases and our H decreases. So you should expect to have a greater heat transfer on the beginning of the plate and a smaller one by the end of the plate, right? So those are the things we can expect beforehand. We're gonna do uh, for part one. So part one, calculate the heat flux at 1.3. We're gonna do part one as per usual with our Newton's law of cooling. And as per usual, this is equivalent to saying that the heat flux is just, since we want heat flux, all we need to do is find what is our uh, convective coefficient and our delta T. Delta T already know. The only thing we don't know is our convective heat transfer coefficient, which in this case here in particular is quite easy to find, right? Because we have an equation for it and we're interested in the H at this point here, this is 0 0.3. So all we're doing is my convective coefficient is 0 0.3 is going to be 25 over 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And this turns out to be 40 approximately. Where is it? Wait, where did I put it? Uh, approximately 40.5, right? So it's 40.49 something, 40.5. What's meter squared? Okay. Okay, and having that information now, how easy is that, right? Well, it doesn't really get much easier than this. Well, Q will be 40.5 watts meter square Kelvin times the difference in temperature, which is 58 minus 21, and that's Kelvin or Celsius, right? So these guys go away. We're left surely enough with heat flux units, and this is 1,400. And 97. Please back me up on the math. Math is good. Cool. Let's just put it one step down so it's not confusing. There you go. Lost the dot. Okay, so that is part one. As easy as that. We got the heat flux. So we got how much, what is the heat flux on this section here? On this section here of the board, we know that small Q over here will be about 1500. Now part two, part two says, what is the local heat transfer coefficient at the end of the plate? What is the local heat transfer coefficient? What is the local heat? So what is H at the end of the plate? And what we know is that X at the end of the plate equals L, right? X at the end of the plate is just the, the length of the plate, right? Because we know X is just a vector that's leading from here. And then if we go to the end of the plate, that will be just L. So in this case, it's L, which for our example is 1.2 meters. So H at 1.2 or 
h at l, same thing, is 25 divided by 1.2 to the 0 0.4. And this turns out to be um, 23.2. 23.2 watts per meter square Kelvin or Celsius. Okay, and just like that, we finish this question. Now, before I sign you guys off and send you guys off to your break, note that this question, there's more to this question, right? Obviously, this is only the first part of the question. It's been like broken down, you get, given all this information around the uh, properties of the air and around the properties of the flat plate. And you can obviously see there, you can calculate Reynolds out of this. So what we're gonna be doing from next week onwards after your break is finding these relationships between Reynolds and Nusso and uh, H. So these things are gonna come into play. So we're probably gonna have a couple more questions like this, but with further things for us to do. This would be like the beginning of it. But for this question specifically, that's it. As simple as that, we solve the question. And we can see that as we expected our H is decreasing as we go further down the um, down the length of the plate. As a matter of fact, what ends up happening usually ends up happening usually is if we plot X and H here, is we have a behavior like so until our fluid becomes turbulent, and then when it becomes turbulent, there's like a gap in here, and then it goes upwards and then decreases again. We're gonna talk about why we're gonna talk about these behaviors and things like that on the next week onward. So for now, we're all done. Do you guys have questions?